Hello, IB Environmental students. Today we're going to be talking about a piece of law called CITES, as well as the Red List and some specific case studies about species and how to protect them. All right. So CITES is really important and many students just completely forget about it. CITES is the Convention on International Trade. That's what the T in CITES stands for, of endangered species. So we've been talking about how species are labeled under the red list. Well, all of those endangered species are going to be covered under this. The goal is to help reduce international trade in many specific organisms, to organize international awareness and protect their habitats. But this is a very species-based approach. So let's evaluate that. The enforcement is pretty difficult because consequences are weak, but there are fine. So for instance, if there was um, rhinoceros tusk traded and it was found on the market they would try to trace it back and try to find someone but that's really tough to do especially since it's international but at least it's starting to be in place um, countries get to opt in and that part makes enforcement even more difficult um, value of organisms may increase um, especially the acute mammals all right, so the ones that look cutest are usually the ones that are paid attention the most. So it's not like there's a really ugly insect that's endangered. Are we going to be as attuned to taking care of it and watching out for it? And we've talked about a lot that the habitat focus encompasses a lot of benefits. And that's probably the best method to protect not only one specific species but many species as well as the complex ecosystem it requires so the habitat based approach is usually the best but this is still good because it at least is trying so now that we've gotten what CITES is we're going to talk about some specific organisms that could have been on CITES but also are just endangered and how their different situations have changed over time so here's lots of different organisms that are considered endangered at given times but we're going to focus in on three different case studies um, our first case study is the endangered case study, which is for elephants. They are considered to be keystone species, which means they're very valuable to the ecosystem and whether or not other organisms are surviving. They maintain the grassland and the community by removing trees and restarting ecological succession. That's why they're keystone. They are considered um, cute megafauna, which is one of the reasons why they're much in the news. There's a lot of ecological pressure because their habitats are shrinking. There's some social political struggles with elephants because um, their habitats are starting to be smaller um, and it's widespread. And they're overall socially very much wanted for their ivory. And a lot of times the poachers just don't care if they kill the elephant in the process, which is very horrible. And the ivory can go to market. And then through CITES, we would potentially hopefully be able to track down the poachers, but it's not 100%. Economic pressure, there's still a market for ivory. So poachers will continue to sell ivory as long as it can make money. Consequences. What we're really worried, especially since this is an ecosystem, keystone species that maintains the grassland, we're worried that the ecosystem overall will change without elephants present. And they're really, really decreasing quickly. Here's our extinct case study, and there are plenty of different other options we could have picked, but we picked the passenger pen pigeon. Um, it's been extinct since September 1st, 1914. Its ecological role is that it was a numerous bird on the planet, meaning that it was part of many different ecosystems. Its cause of the current status was mostly um, due to many things, actually. Ecologically, there was um, many forests that were cleared, all right, and that was usually due to agricultural reasons. They also don't make many babies a year. Socially, politically, people were eating them. 
especially on the East Coast back in the early 1900s. Economically, they um, were just such a good market for meat because they were, many of them, easy to capture. And so it ended up being kind of like tragedy of the commons. Before we knew it, there weren't many of them, and then they just couldn't survive. Um, so without them, they used to eat a lot of the bugs that are related to Lyme disease like ticks. And so now one of the reasons why we think Lyme disease might be more prevalent is and more common is because these birds aren't around anymore to eat some of the bugs to keep them in check as a predator. Pretty crazy. This one's our positive case study. We could have done some other ones. A bald eagle is another example of a recovered species. But the American alligator is a really good example. It was considered from endangered to recovered June 4th, 1987 by the Red List. Its ecological role is a keystone predator, meaning that it was a top order carnivore keeping in check its prey in the Everglades. Keystone again means that it helps keep the other organisms in check and the ecosystem the same. The causes of its original endangerment status were that they had very little habitat. The Everglades were being converted over into agricultural land and also into urban centers. Social politically, they thought that the ag ag alligator was a nuisance. Many people were shooting them when they would come across them. They didn't think that it was very sustainable. And a lot of tourism was occurring, which meant that they thought it was even more of a nuisance. So this, for us, more locally, is like having coyotes around and wolves around. You'd be pretty scared if a wolf was coming by. But one of the reasons why we have so many deer is because we, we've really knocked a lot of the wolves and the coyotes from our area. So these guys are like our wolves and coyotes. Economic pressure. Um, this was conf the... the we, we could accidentally confuse this with the American crocodile, and it was hunted for its skins, but it's now protected under CITES. So if we accidentally find someone poaching these and skinning them to make handbags or shoes, they now can get fined under the CITES, the trade law we talked about earlier, and that was able to protect them a lot. So when they were decreasing, um, because they're a keystone predator, a lot of bad things happened. There was a loss of birds and fish populations because they just didn't have their predator to keep everything in check. The whole Everglades as an ecosystem is now healthy again because these guys are back in the thick of it. Wonderful job, guys.